Uh, my name is Evan Kenny. I'm from Wakefield. I'm, uh, I'm a newcomer to the Republican Party at 18 years old. You know, I, it's going to be tough to follow up to, to Mr. Baker's speech. You know, I Had I been a voting age, I certainly would have supported you, Mr. Baker. I, I, uh, <laughs> Evan Kenny was a high school senior and, as you heard him say, they're a newcomer to the Republican Party when he spoke at his regional Republican Party caucus in Massachusetts back in April. He was trying to get a spot as an alternate delegate to the Republican National Convention in Tampa in August. Now, the man he had to follow in terms of giving his speech, the Mr. Baker he was saying he would have voted for had he been old enough to vote, Mr. Baker is Charles Baker, the Republican Party's most recent nominee for governor in Massachusetts. Mr. Baker ran against Democrat Deval Patrick in 2010, and he lost. Incidentally, Mr. Baker also lost that day in April, where you just saw tape at that caucus. Charlie Baker lost his bid to be an alternate delegate to the Republican convention in August, and the person he lost to was that high school kid who could not vote for him in 2010 on account of him only being 16 years old at the time. When Massachusetts Republicans got together in April to pick delegates to the national convention, I think the idea was to quickly and quietly and painlessly elect a bunch of Republican bigwigs to go to Tampa in August to enthusiastically vote for home state Mitt Romney as the party's nominee for president. But that is not at all what happened. For starters, there was Evan Kenny, this high school kid who beat the party's last nominee for governor for one of the alternate spots in the delegation. Young Mr. Kenny and a handful of like-minded supporters of Ron Paul also beat out leading Republican Party lights like Carrie Healy, who was Mitt Romney's lieutenant governor. She was also the Republican nominee for governor in Massachusetts in 2006. She lost to Deval Patrick the first time before Charles Baker got his chance to lose to Deval Patrick the second time. The current Republican leader in the Massachusetts House of Representatives, uh, he lost that day, too. Also, the longtime sheriff of Essex County in Massachusetts, he lost as well. This is Mitt Romney's home state, and all these big-name Republican elected officials couldn't even win places on the state delegation to go nominate him. He was the Republican governor of Massachusetts, and the next two people who tried to be the Republican governors of Massachusetts after him, sorry, you didn't make the cut. There's a high school senior who's got more support than you. The whole ordeal was very embarrassing for the Romney campaign. They had chosen a nice slate of Romney-supporting delegates who they thought would get, you know, an official rubber stamp approval at the state caucuses, and then they'd go on to support him at the convention. No muss, no fuss. But these caucuses turned out not to be a rubber stamp approval kind of deal. After the caucuses in April, the Boston Globe reported less than half of the delegates that the Romney campaign had chosen actually won their spots on the delegation. The people who won instead were, in large part, Ron Paul supporters, enthusiastic high school kid and all. And that is when things got messy. The party declared out of the blue in a way they never had before and in a way that is never mentioned in their rules that all the officially selected delegates from Massachusetts this year would have to sign this affidavit. They would have to swear under the pain and penalty of perjury that they would vote for Mitt Romney at the Republican convention in August. Now, some of the Ron Paul fans among the newly elected delegates balked at the affidavit. I mean, what if something, it's, and, it's, and it's reasonable, I mean, what if something happens between now and the convention, something unforeseen, Romney gets his name pulled for some reason that nobody can foresee now, right? Massachusetts would have these guys legally bound to vote for him no matter what? That doesn't even make sense. The delegates proposed an alternate pledge that was a little less specific. They changed it so it would pledge them to follow the party rules, not to follow Mitt Romney as a named person. Apparently, the alternate affidavit was not good enough. And the state party threw these guys out. Even the ones who did turn in the state party affidavit were told they were out. They didn't sign it quickly enough. 18-year-old Evan Kenny and 16 other officially elected delegates were disqualified by the state Republican Party, even though they won fair and square. They were disqualified as delegates for failing to deliver the I pledge myself to Mitt Romney affidavit uh, or for delivering it too late. So their own rules, their own duly conducted election be darned. The Republican Party has come up with a whole new rule after the fact to keep the Ron Paul supporting rebel out. And when they kicked out Evan Kenny, the enthusiastic high school kid, wouldn't you know it, they decided they wanted to give his spot instead to the guy who ran for governor, who Evan Kenny beat fair and square. Joining us now for the interview is Evan Kenny, elected as an alternate delegate for the Massachusetts Republican Party. He's a Ron Paul supporter. Evan, it's great to meet you. Thank you for being it's here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Rachel. You wrote an excellent email when we first covered this little scandal, explaining that you were the guy at the center of it all, and I'm grateful for you to, reach, uh, to you for reaching out. Um, 
How did it feel when you won, when you beat out some of these really bold-faced named Republicans in your state at that caucus? Well, let me say, first of all, that Charlie Baker, uh, with the speech that you just showed, uh, when I said that I'm an 18-year-old newcomer to the party, uh, the first hands to clap belonged to Charlie Baker. Mm -hmm. Charlie Baker and Luke Noble, they were both two, two people who were very excited to see this enthusiasm in the party. Um, and Charlie Baker, actually, they, they did try to send Charlie Baker to the convention, but Charlie Baker said, no, absolutely not. I lost. This kid mm. won, you know. So these, he's these not, won. even though they're trying to give him your spot, yeah. he's saying this is not fair. He's being righteous. He's saying no. What was your reaction to being given that legal affidavit saying that you would vote for Mitt Romney under the pain of perjury? You know, I actually, I, I, my reaction was kind of like, well, okay, because I, I didn't know the rules, and I also didn't know that the affidavit had never been done before. Uh, so I was like, well, I plan to do that anyway, and I, I pledged to do that at the caucus, and that's all that's required in the rules. I pledged to do that at the caucus, so I was, I was ready to send it in until someone pointed out to me. Actually, it was my mom. My mom, <laughs> who's certainly no legal expert, she said, you can't swear under pain and penalty of perjury to do something in the future. It would never hold up in court. I said, you know, you're right. Maybe I should be careful. And, you know, after consulting with the Mass Liberty Caucus, uh, we decided to send in an affidavit that just says, we're going to follow your rules. We're going to follow Mass General Law and the GOP rules which it means we're going to vote for Mitt Romney in the first ballot. Mm -hmm. and that, but that was not enough. That was not enough, even if I got it in on time. What was their explanation to you once you did turn in the affidavit that you turned in? What was their explanation for you for why you couldn't go? Well, if, uh, you know, two weeks later, uh, at the uh, state committee meeting on June 12th, I had, I had signed that original affidavit that the state GOP sent me, so that's the third pledge. Um, I gave it directly to the chairman of the committee, who kicked me out. And he sent me a letter signed with his name in ink uh, three days later that said, that Romney for President Inc. had just cause and irrefutable evidence that I would not vote for Mitt Romney in the first ballot. But I had a, a legally notarized affidavit, two of them, as well as a verbal pledge. And all that was required was the verbal pledge. So I pledged three times to vote for Mitt Romney. And I'll say it now. I will be happy to represent the voters of Massachusetts and vote for Mitt Romney in the first ballot of the convention. Why That's what you, I ran for. Why, why do you think they're doing this? Like, I mean, not just, I mean, they're giving these legalistic explanations. But what is your sense about, about why they're doing this? I was struck, I'm asking you because you told the Globe you felt that you had been rudely awakened to the realities of politics. Yeah. Does that mean that you think they are doing this for a reason other than why they, what they are saying? Well, maybe. I don't know. But, but I, I will say that, you know, the, the, this is the Republican leadership in the, in the, in the Massachusetts GOP. It's, it, it, they don't represent Richard Desai. They don't represent Charlie Baker. Because these people reached out to me and said, thank you. You know, bring, bring the youth movement to right. the Republican Party. Um, it, these, are, these are only a few corrupt power brokers in the leadership who want to keep the, the, the party to themselves. They don't care that it's 11% voter registration and, and, and shrinking in Massachusetts in the Republican Party. They, they just want to keep the power to themselves. But, you know, the, for, forever in terms of the Ron Paul movement. And Ron Paul's been around and he's had a lot of different aspects to his career, some of which I find, uh, some of which I find repellent, some of which I find incredibly exciting. And in, it, since 2008 in particular, sort of 2007 until now, he really has spoken to young people in a way that other Republican Absolutely. politicians have not. he's 76 years old. He's 76 years old, and he talks about it very eloquently, saying, listen, all of these young people are interested in the message. They treat me like a rock star because of what I am talking about, because of the message. So if the Republican Party wants to capitalize on my young voters, why don't you guys look into my message? Why don't you think the Republican Party will do that? I feel like the Republican Party is inexplicably hostile to Ron Paul supporters. Well, the real Republican Party is us. The real Republican Party is me and the 16 other delegates who were removed from their elected positions. And the real Republican Party is Charlie Baker, these people who, who are, are coming out to represent the Republican oath. They're not out to represent George Bush and Rush Limbaugh, right? right? They're out to represent the Republican oath, which holds principles of, of liberty, sound money policy, which is a Ron Paul slogan, um, free enterprise, and even equal rights, Rachel, and the Republican oath, equal rights. I've heard of those. It's yeah. great. Exactly, right? And, you know, and that's, those are real Republican values. And that's why I'm still a Republican. That's why I'm happy to say I'm a Republican, because I'm not the Republican that George Bush represents. I'm the Republican that the Republican oath represents. Well, you are, uh, you are having to fight tooth and nail to be recognized by mainline Republicans uh, in terms of what you just said. But they ought to be really happy to have you. And I'm happy to have you here. I think so. Thank great you to very meet much. You, Evan. Thanks a lot, man. Good luck to you. Thank you. Evan Kenny, 18 years old. Do you believe it? Elected as an alternate delegate for the Massachusetts Republican Party and obviously a Ron Paul supporter. See, Republicans, it's safe to come here. We can have very constructive discussions. All right, we'll be right back.